out at our place. So, for the weather. Yeah. And, but also uh, thankful to be here and the support that I get from all the, all the people here. So, thank you. But on that note, we'd like to start the service with a song called This Is The Day. And if you would please rise and join with us and bring up the spirit. We got a special guest minister today. So I don't know if it's a surprise yet Reverend or not. Reverend Cheryl's here. Reverend Cheryl's in the house. So uh, we're going to rock the house today. So we'll get it started. You ready? I'm ready. Are you ready? Uh, I think I'm ready. <laughs> and be glad in it. Sing that with me. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, a day to be seized, yeah. A day I can feel my spirit set free. Yes, this is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day all my dreams come true. Can feel the spirit. Rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning. Welcome to West Valley Center for Spiritual Living. My name is Reverend Clyde Goins. I'm the assistant minister here. I want to welcome you here on this beautiful Sunday morning. And so before we get started, I'd like to recognize our new Reverend Sue Witter. So Sue... She uh, she passed her oral panels, which there was no questions about that, uh, on on Wednesday. And so next Saturday, we're going to be having a little celebration for her. Next Sunday, we're going to have a little... Look at her. She's ready. Next Sunday, we're going to have a, a little celebration for uh, Reverend Sue. Reverend Sue. Reverend Sue. Yes. Um, and I want to remind you guys that, um, so again, we have a uh, foundations class coming up on September the 11th um, from 1.30 to 3. That's going to be an introductory free class just to, to tell you about the class itself and give you an overview of what we, what we teach and what we believe. And then starting the following week uh, on September the 18th at 1.30, it's a nine-week um, of our Foundations Back to the Basics class. And it teaches all about our spiritual principles, um, how we pray, what we believe. And, and if you're ready to change your life, it's a great class to attend. And then if you've attended the class before, if you, it's been a while, it's a great class to take it over, right? Because we're always operating from a different place in life. And so um, to have that experience all over again would be wonderful. So again, please join uh, Reverend Karen with that. That's coming up. Um, and then I also want to remind everybody that, um, that we don't announce this too often, but um, every Saturday we have an ohm circle um, from 6.30 to 7.30 here at the center. And it's a, it's a beautiful meditation. They're, they're, it's an ohm meditation. And so uh, we're, we do it every Saturday night. So if you're available, please join us for that. And then the last announcement is that we have um, our exciting, wonderful, delicious fundraiser coming up. Uh, it is uh, Gourmet for Gods. And so that is that is coming up. And so 
um, this is just a little warning to start thinking about what you want to, per, um, what you if you want to host something, if you want to host a dinner um, or, or an event, it could be anything, and, and they're going to have a lot of information about it, but I just wanted to plant the seed, and we're going to start watering it here very shortly, right? I'm going to let you know that I already have all my events on my calendar. I've got my menus already laid out, so I am ready to go because I'm ready for this event. <laughs> yeah, so, more chickens. I, you know, uh, on a side note, I send um, Kathy these chicken videos. You know, they're these music videos. You, you, they're, they're, they're these chickens singing. So I figured she'd appreciate that. So. Anyway, but yeah, so Gourmet for God is, is right around the corner, and it's going to be exciting and beautiful, and every year it seems to be getting better and better, and so we are excited about that. So, all right, so all this information is available on the newsletter, WV, I'm sorry, on the website, wvcsl.com, and then you can also um, uh, receive a newsletter with all of our information. You can sign up in the uh, the bookstore. There's a little card you can fill out, and you can give it to Kay or drop it off in the in the um, tithe box, and, and we will get you added to the um, the distribution list so that way you receive the newsletter. And then the one last thing um, before we read our vision statement is that um, uh, right after service, we have call to prayer right up front here. So if you want to pray with a practitioner, please come up and, and join Kathy Royer as our practitioner for today, and she'll be happy to pray with you. So, all right, so now we've, that's all of our announcements. So let's say our vision statement together. We are a loving, joy-filled community honoring the many paths to God as we learn and live the science of mind principles. And so it is. So take a deep breath, relax as we move within. I will make a quiet place, a quiet place within my heart. I will wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord Be still my soul Be still Be still my soul Be still Be still and
one essence, one mind, one love, joy, peace, beauty, health, prosperity, freedom, light that permeates all there is, all there ever was, and all there will be. And we are each, each part of this whole, each of us in our own individualized way, love, joy, beauty, peace, all of it. And as we come together in this space today, we bring all of these presents, all these gifts with us and express them. And I say a word of blessing for the Braffords for all of their wonderful music that always inspires us, that brings us together, gets us on our feet, makes us feel as one. And I say a word of blessing for Reverend Cheryl, knowing that God speaks through her, knowing that each word that she says is divinely inspired, and she teaches us so that the lessons that she does teach us we can take and grow with. And I just know that this service is absolutely perfect, whole, and complete just the way that it is. So I just release this into the law knowing it is done. And together we say, and so it is. Okay, so I'm going to do something a little different, which is not unusual for me. I like different. I'm reading from The Science of Mind. And honestly, I don't know exactly where in the textbook it comes from. But um, it is a quotation. I don't. I couldn't find it, but I know it's there. All right, here we go. I'm going to change it up a little bit because it talks a lot about I, and I'm going to change I to we. So it makes it about us, okay, our truth. We are a center in the divine mind, a point of God-conscious life, truth and action, our affairs are divinely guided and guarded into right action, into correct results. Everything we do, say, or think is stimulated by the truth. There is a power in this word that, I, that we speak because it is of the truth, and it is the truth. There is perfect and continuous right action in our lives and all our affairs. All belief in wrong action is dispelled and made negative. Right action alone has power, and right action is power, and power is God, the living Spirit Almighty. This Spirit emanates everything we do, say, or think. Ideas come to us daily, and these ideas are divine ideas. They direct us and sustain us without effort. I am continuously directed. We are compelled to do the right thing at the right time, to say the right word at the right time, to follow the right course at all times. All suggestion of age, poverty, limitation, or unhappiness is uprooted from our minds and cannot gain entrance into our thoughts. We are happy, well, filled with perfect life. We live in the spirit of truth and, and are conscious that the spirit of truth lives within us. Our word is a law unto its own manifestation and will bring to us or cause us to be brought to its fulfillment. There is no unbelief, no doubt, no uncertainty. We know, and we know that we know. Let every thought of doubt vanish from our minds, that we may know the truth, and that the truth may make us free. And so it is. You will do amazing things With the choice each new day brings And with every step you take Bless the progress that you make The reason you live Is there in every gift you give Love your life, love your dreams You will do amazing things Amazing, amazing You will do amazing things Amazing, amazing You will do amazing things 
Oh, the places you will go And the people you will know Don't worry about when or how You don't need to know that now You're on the right track No need to look ahead or back Just enjoy what this life brings You You will do amazing amazing things things. Sing with us Amazing, amazing You will do amazing Amazing, amazing, amazing. You will do amazing things. You don't have to work it out. Just stay in the here and now. Let your mind rest for a little while. Sometimes the deepest answers come. While you're out there having fun So close your eyes and take a breath And and smile Amazing, amazing You will do amazing things Amazing, amazing you will do amazing. You will do amazing. You will do amazing things. Yes, and now I'd like to invite Reverend Cheryl up. She will be doing amazing things. And uh, yeah, so she's been part of our community for quite a while. So she is, um, she comes in and pops in on us every once in a while. And so it is a wonderful treat to have her this morning. So welcome, Reverend Cheryl. Thank you. Now, I'm not saying that he told a lie, (laughs) but this is my home. This West Valley is my spiritual home. Okay, (sighs) I've been looking forward to this. (sighs) I have a cousin that uh, we were talking. Sometimes she she has said to me, you just went home one day, had a drink, and made up that religion that you have. (laughs) And so since she, she said that, I always sort of try to start my lesson with the Bible. Philippians 4, 8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, Whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are good report. If there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. Think on these things. So Ernest Holmes, the founder of Science of Mind, he said... There is a powerful good in the universe greater than you are, and you can use it. Today, I am asking you to listen to my lesson with your heart. Please, listen with your heart, because today I'm talking about energy. And although everything in this universe is energy, we can't see it. We can't touch it. But we can sense it. We can feel it. And we can learn to better respond to it. Now, you don't have to know about the law of vibration or the law of attraction to use energy. But the more I have learned about it, the more proof I have 
that I am enough. Oh, yeah. As you know, the law of vibration states that everything, everything including us, is in constant motion, vibrating at its own unique frequency. But you may not know that the vi law of vibration mandates that we first must align to the frequency of our dreams and our desires before we can start attracting them to us. And that's why the law of vibration always precedes the law of attraction. Now, I know you've heard about the law of attraction, but did you know that the law of attraction is the secondary law? It always follows the law of vibration because the law of attraction can only attract and reflect back to us experiences of matching vibration, frequency, by vibration first, law of attraction second. Now the frequency of energy is the speed or rate that something vibrates. Now this is important because if your energy vibration ain't got the zing, then you don't get the thing. <laughs> now what changed my life is when I recognized that the only difference between lavish and sickness and perfect health and joy is the rate of the vibration. I need everyone to take a breath. Take a breath and feel, just feel what you feel. Now this feeling that you are vibrating right now just gave the universe its answer. You didn't hear the question? Well, the universe is always asking the question. Who are you? How shall I know you? What is your name? And our answer is always given as a vibrational frequency, a feeling. And now, the law of vibration gets, the law of attraction gets busy because the frequency has been set. Now, one of the great old school science of mind ministers and teacher, Dr. Walker, David Walker, wrote in his book, You Are Enough, he said that every person can accomplish what they set out to do if they just set out to do at first by accepting their enoughness. Accepting. That accepting is a feeling. A feeling of enoughness. A vibrational frequency of enoughness. Now, I know you can't see it or touch it. But we can sense it, ooh, we can feel it. The vibrational frequency of enoughness is the vibrational frequency of truth. It feels good. It always feels good. Now, Penny Pierce said in her book, Frequency, your personal vibration the vibration of energy you hold moment by moment in your mind, in your emotions, in your body is the most important tool you have for creating your ideal life. Your personal vibration is the most important tool that you have. Now, I'm saying that as humans, our personal vibration and the vibration of us accepting, accepting our enoughness will take us anywhere we choose to go. See, that's why we are enough. The catch is we just have not proven it to ourselves and we must prove it for ourselves that I am enough. But we're humans. 
So we also have the ability to make up stories, to lie about ourselves. And that's one of the things that set humans apart from anything else. We have the ability to lie, to lie about ourselves, to deny ourselves. We have the ability to deny our enoughness. And that's a problem because lies have a vibrational frequency which it, matches physical experiences that are possible since everything's possible. But these physical experiences are not as much fun as the truth made manifest. But the good news, we have the ability to feel slow and low energy. And that's an opportunity. That is an opportunity to deliberately shift into a frequency that is greater. Sounds too easy. Well, it is. But let's just call it simple. Simple once we understand how our vibration work. And simple when we teach ourselves that lies hurt and lies get in our way and life makes our life smaller. So I find that when I recognize what, what, how to align to the vibration of my desire, it gets easier when I align to the truth that I am enough. But in many cases, while we're embracing the truth of I am enough, we haven't parted ways with those corresponding lies that we have been told. Lies like, you're not old enough, and now you're not young enough, and you're not tall enough, you're not good enough, you're not small enough, you ain't cute enough, you are not. Well, you ain't nothing. You're not enough. And now we are repeating these lies. And this causes a problem. They're manifesting. We cannot support the vibration of the truth and the vibration of a lie at the same time. Now, all that does is creates a vibrational frequency of confusion and pain. And remember, the law of attraction still is obligated to fulfill that match and reflect back the experience that equals the vibrational frequency of that lie. And that lie is not perfect. But see, lies get in our head and make us feel small. They make us feel unworthy. Many of us have never even questioned some of those lies. And some were harsh and by no means fun. But we just believed. Us. That's the way life is. And for this reason, this reason alone, it has been easier for us to hold on to that lie than to let them go. So now we find ourselves in a space where we are questioning how to differentiate the truth from the lie. Somebody wrote, if you believe the truth is a lie, you will automatically believe that the lie is the truth. And that makes sense. But it's easy to differentiate the lie from the truth based solely on how they make us feel. Brian Katie told us in her book, Loving What Is, she said, behind every uncomfortable feeling, there is a thought that isn't true. Now, this is the way I say it. Lies are painful. Lies hurt. And it's as simple as that. But now feel this. Our good is already here. And it's already ours. And without a 
doubt, feel this. We are enough, enough to experience any good thing. Feel that. See, if you're not having a one heck of a good time, well, how am I going to say this? Well, so it won't hurt your feelings. Well, okay, okay, okay. Now, you might have heard this before. It's not you. It's not you. It's not you. That is not enough. It's the vibrational frequency that you are offering for the match exchange. The frequency that you're offering, it is not enough. The frequency is not high enough. The frequency is not fast enough to match the goody, goody, gumdrop desire that you now desire. It ain't fast enough. And it's as simple as that. Come on. What else could it be? We individualize God. Therefore, there is no thing that is too good for me. There is no thing that is too good for you. How could anything be too good for the individualization of God? But we must feel it to experience it. The APA Dictionary of Psychology stated that a feeling is a self-contained phenomenal experience. I had never heard that. The feeling is a self-contained phenomenal experience. Self-contained. That means that the feeling is already carrying the experience around inside itself. Hey, inside of you. See, that's why I have an experience and you have a different experience because we don't all feel the same. Once I learned that what we feel is our vibrational frequency, which becomes a measuring cup and demonstrates how much or how little I understand, mm -mm, I start paying closer attention to my feelings. And once I really paid attention, I knew it was time for me to change. Because since I didn't always like what I was feeling, I knew I would not like the expression of these things once it vibrated on my mountain. Vibrations first. Attraction next. Please don't think that you can have an experience that you have not vibrated yet. It's in Possible. It's impossible. It's impossible. Now, I recognize that my feelings are important because my surroundings to my, my, my feelings to my surroundings are always impacting me. Now, Wayne Dyer said on a YouTube clip, it really impacted me. He said, Hey, energy doesn't come in good or bad. Energy comes in high and low. Hen energy comes in fast and slow. Well, what I know is that low, slow energy feels bad, and I don't like it. Today, we're adjusting our frequency to everything we hear everything we see, and definitely everything we feel. And I now know that we do feel it, and therefore we are vibrating it. So I had to teach myself to recognize what I was feeling. I don't always know what I'm thinking, but I always know what I'm feeling. And now I know that what I'm feeling is too important for me to ignore it. Now, I try to go through the day feeling what I'm thinking. And if I don't like it, I trust the law. The copycat, then I know that I have to read.
think whatever this is, I can guarantee you more and more gooder, gooder, better, better experiences if you embrace the law of vibration. Remember, there's a power of good in the universe, and we can use it all day long, we're thinking. All day long, we're feeling, and all day long, we're vibrating the universal qualities of life. Feel this. Love, life, power, peace, beauty, joy, health, prosperity, freedom. And what I'm thinking and what I am feeling determines how much or how little we receive. Oftentimes, what we receive is not enough. But we, we are enough. The catch is we just have to prove it to ourselves. Now, <laughs> I remember my first time. I remember my first time. Oh, come on now. You know I'm up on this podium. I'm talking about the first time, the first time that you prove to yourself that I am enough. You'll never forget it. But let me tell you my story. Do you know that children's rhymes, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me? Well, that's a lie. <laughs> words spoken by others may not hurt you, but mean, lying self-talk can make us feel small and unworthy and make us believe that we are not enough. And that feels bad. Now, years ago, I want to tell you my story. Years ago, I was in a important meeting with, with important people, district managers, district uh, directors, and the United States Department of Agriculture's Inspector General, Agriculture's top boss. We were in the meeting to provide, to provide our opinions and to provide what we thought because a decision had to be made. Now, I can't tell you what the decision was because if I told you, I had to kill you. <laughs> but I walked in this room feeling confident and wise. And once I sat down, I recognized I was the only junior auditor at the table. I was the only female at the table, and I was the only person of color at the table. This ain't no big thing. I was still feeling confident and worthy. The discussion started, and the time came for the decision to be made. The inspector general gave his, his opinion first. He said, yes, let's go with it. Let's go with it. Oh, shoot, 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 shoot. <laughs> My first thought, we don't agree. Instantly, I felt a bit nervous, a bit uncomfortable. I felt it. Next one by one, the district directors spoke. Each agreed with the inspector general, and as each spoke, my self-talk, my self-talk started lying on me. Oh, you shouldn't be here. What you doing here? They know more than you. Oh, I felt unsure. That self-talk, you must be wrong. You know they have more experience than you. Hey, they're directors. Maybe you shouldn't be here. Next, the district manager's opinion. And no surprise here, one by one, they too agreed with the inspector general. Now, my self-talk, well, it was getting loud and it was getting mean. Okay, 
let's think about this. You are going to disagree with the United States Department of Agriculture, Inspector General Cheryl, even after the directors have agreed with him? Girl, have you lost your mind, Cheryl? Cheryl, you're representing the Midwest region. What are they going to say back at the office? You must be wrong. You're going to get fired. You're going to get fired. Now, it was my turn, and all eyes were on me. The United States Department of Agriculture Inspector General said, Cheryl, what do you have for us? What's your opinion? Time didn't just slow down. Time stopped. <laughs> I did not like the feeling of this moment. Nobody agreed with me. Here comes that self-talk again. Just lie. Just act like you agree. Ooh. Ooh, that don't feel good. Just lie. Nobody will know you're lying. Ooh, ooh, that feels bad. And all eyes were still on me waiting for my opinion. Hold it. My opinion. Waiting for Cheryl's opinion. Oh, my God, that was a wonderful moment. Because I knew right here in this right now moment, I remember what I was doing. I remember, Cheryl, you're guiding G-O-D-D-I-N-G. -D -D I caught it. I caught it. Which means in this moment, like every moment, the universe is always asking a question that no one can answer for the universe but you. You. The universe is asking, hey, boo, Cheryl, do you believe that your opinions have value? Cheryl, do you believe that your opinions have worth? Oh, oh, my goodness. I recognize this moment. I have prepared for this moment. I have studied for this moment. I had taken care classes for this moment to know what was happening. See, it looked like the inspector general was asking me, Cheryl, what do you think? Yeah, I knew better. I knew that right here in this right now moment is the universe that's asking, Cheryl, who are you? How shall I know you? What is your name? Hey, Cheryl, just vibrate your answer to me like you always do. And I will know what to do with it like I always do. I will reflect it back to you. In that moment, I knew it was more important for me to agree with my truth than it was for me to agree with the United States Department of Agriculture, Office Inspector General. Woo! Time started again. My answer, well, you know, I don't agree. And this is why. Shortly after that, my first meeting with the United States Department of Agriculture, Inspector General, it ended. The meeting was over. We each went our own separate ways. But it was no surprise to me. I felt good. Oh no, I felt really, really good with myself. See, I had just vibrated that Cheryl's opinions count. I had just vibrated that Cheryl's opinions are important. I had just vibrated that Cheryl's Opinions were worth hearing. <laughs> oh my. That was fun. Now, approximately two months later, my director called me into his office, and he said, I just got a call from the inspector general. He is initiating a new department council, and he wants you on it. 
Cheryl, he said you impressed him. See, that's why I remember my first time. That was my first time. And that's the day that I first proved to myself that, yes, I am enough. But that's not all. That was the first day that I proved that my game of guarding, G-O-D-D-I-N-G, well, it really works. But what I want you to recognize is that we are all guarding, all of us. But we all have to start guarding consciously and deliberately. There's already an existing vibration for everything in life. So it's important for me to, de to know what my desires feel like rather than unconsciously matching vibrations that I never want to see in my life. I don't never want to see on my mountain disease, lack, depression, and I want to realize that this is exactly what I'm doing when I am in worry or when I'm in doubt or when I am in fear. See, that's guarding too. But that, that's not good guarding. That's, that is un, 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 that is guarding that we're not giving thought to. We're not directing. See, when I put something on my mountain, I want it to be fun. I want it to be exciting. And I want it to be phenomenal. See, it's important that I feel what my desires feel like. And I participate in conscious guarding. So we want all of our guarding to be deliberate. And the good news is, it's simple. I'm not creating a vibration. I'm deliberately aligning to a vibration that already exists. I keep encouraging myself, keep asking, keep asking what else can I experience? What else can you do with love, life, light, power, peace, beauty, joy, health, and prosperity? What can I express? That is a more, more, gooder, gooder, better, better expression of these qualities. Mmm, I am. It's not just energy that's available to me. It's the energy that I am. Remember, everything's energy, including me. Everything is energy, including you. So, as I am deliberately guiding, I am always, I am always expanding my I amness. When I am deliberately guiding, I make all things new in this right here, right now moment of power. I start with the unformed energy that can become anything. And I begin to deliberately deliberately inject my thoughts and feelings. Yes, you know, some of us read about the truth. Others take classes about the truth. Some people like to show off by telling everybody what they know about the truth. That's not intentional guarding. Intentional guarding is when we apply the truth to ourselves and set out to match it. When I am deliberately guiding, I like to prove to myself what I say I know. When I am deliberately guiding, there are certain things that I must trust. I must trust that the power of the universe is expressing through me. I must trust that all things are possible through my beliefs. I must trust that whatever I'm feeling right now, this vibration is matching something right now. And what I feel, I attract. Fear brings fear. 
Anger brings anger. Joy brings joy. Peace brings peace. And love brings love. So guiding is what I do when I'm intentionally choosing to align with something that I'm ready to experience. Something I'm ready to believe because I am ready to express it. When my demonstrations don't match it up to my intentions, uh-uh, that ain't okay with me. I want to be clear that I know too much about the truth, about these qualities for this itsy bitsy teeny weeny expression of my good. On my mountain, that's not okay. And when this happens, I look at what's showing up, okay? That's a lie. See, I know more about health than this manifestation. Oh, I know more about prosperity than this manifestation. Oh, I know more about joy than this, this beauty experience. No. Now, here's the truth. Here's the truth that I know about health. There's no spot where radiant health is not. Here's the truth that I know about prosperity. Prosperity is ever present in unlimited supplies right here where I am. And here's the truth that I know about joy. As much joy as I can vibrate is mine. The vibration of truth is all that is needed to change any experience. I ain't wasting my time arguing with what showed up because I'm clear. The law has matched my vibrational frequency, fast or slow. And the law is the perfect copycat. Cat. That being the case, I know it's time for me to remember who I am. It's just that simple. I make guiding easy. I make guiding fun. And when my demonstrations do, do look like my intention, I act a fool. I sincerely give myself a hand clap and I give myself a hug and I sincerely look at myself in my eye and I say, good job, Cheryl. Because you vibrated this. Good job, Cheryl. Because it was here already and you didn't have to experience. Good job, Cheryl. Good match. And good on you. Thank you very much. <sighs> oh, I'm doing a prayer. Okay. Now, anybody that knows me, no, just cough when it's time for me to stop. Because sometimes I get in a prayer and I'm just there. So what am I accepting right now? Right here, right now, whole, perfect, and complete exist. Right here and right now. More love, more power, more peace, more beauty, more joy, more health is being offered right now. That vibration already exists. It's already waiting for whosoever to tune into that vibration gets to have the experience. I'm so glad for all the classes that I've taken. I am so glad that this teaching that we study is here. Because with this knowledge, I recognize that there, that any good thing I can experience, any wonderful thing I can experience, because I'm one with it and I know that. Right here, right now, I say yes to more, more love, more joy, more power, more peace. I say yes to it, and when I vibrate, 
when I vibrate to this truth, it is done. It is done. It is done. And so now I just kick back and, and enjoy life because I know how to think. I enjoy life because I know. I know when my feeling is telling me you don't want to be here, boo. I got enough knowledge to step back. Give it thought. Know that there is one power that is always present that can do all things. And when I remember this, I step into this truth. I stand tall in this truth. I will not waver in this truth. And I stand ten toes down. I'm here. I know who I am. I know that we are the individualization of God and all life is offered to us. In this moment, I say yes. In this moment, I get in the vibration of allowing simply by knowing because I am the individualization of God. Because I am the individualization of God. The universe, the universe has said, help yourself. I accept this truth. I stand in this truth. I allow this truth. I will not move. And in this moment, I give thanks for knowing that I know. Grateful. And together we say, and so it is. Grateful. Grateful. Grateful for all the love that I have. I am so grateful. Grateful. Every face I see is love reflected shining back at me. me. I just give thanks for all these the simple things, things, the joy and peace that, that gratitude me. brings. That's why I'm grateful, grateful, grateful for all the love that I have. I am so grateful. Yes, and we are grateful for Reverend Cheryl. So thank you, Reverend Cheryl. All I want to say is I don't remember my first time being like that. <laughs> so now is the time to celebrate the abundance of our lives and the abundance of our communities. I just want to remind everybody that uh, we don't pass around the offering plate, the plate here at our center. We have um, drop boxes and on the way to Pepke Hall for fellowship after service in the back of the room and also in the bookstore. So it, your tithe, your di your um, your donation, your gift, we welcome all of it and we appreciate all of it. So let's say our giving affirmation together. I live in a consciousness of good. Divine love blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, God, and so it is. Please rise for our last song. Oh, 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 it feels so good to be alive. Sing that with me. Oh, oh, oh. I ain't thinking about my problems I'm living now I'm living now And I ain't gonna worry about the future I'm living now I'm living now So put your hands up if you feel like having a good time Put your hands up if you're sharing love with 
Yes, it does. Thank you, Bradford. So let's say our closing affirmation. So repeat after me. I understand the law of vibration. I understand the law of vibration. And I express life from my enoughness. And I express life from my enoughness. And so it is. And so it is. Love much and pray often. Have a wonderful day.